welcome to the Ron Line Report. Joining us today is someone I had the pleasure of having on here not that long ago, but we just had the biggest show in our sport, the Olympia weekend. And I like to talk to people who have strong opinions and are not afraid to express them. People who have a good eye for the physiques. Uh, today, King Kamali is that man. King, thank you for joining us. Anytime, brother. Anytime. So uh, were you at the show? No, no. Too busy here in New York, but I did watch it on uh online so i saw the whole thing okay so uh before we get to the open uh let's talk about the 212. Uh, okay. first, first of all what do you think of flex how did this compare to flex's best it wasn't at his best i would say he was about 90 93 94 percent flex lewis yeah condition still good enough to win yeah yeah i definitely had him in first place do you think flex is having trouble so much trouble getting down to 212 that it's really starting to affect his ability to peak right? No. No? No, no. To be honest with you, I think that's just an excuse that some people like to use. I think um, Dallas passing away fucked him up. Mm. You know, even though he said, and he came out and he was clear, you know, all the interviews, and he said, no, I use that as motivation. No, it's, you're human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're human, and that affected you. Your buddy just passed away. Right. So it affected him a little bit, you know, but... Um, he still, again, at 93%, was good enough to win. Yeah, because you know, we say that, but Josh Lenardowitz was, he was staying with Dallas. He was training with Dallas. Josh looked great, I thought. I, it didn't, I'm sure it did affect him. I'm sure he was very devastated by the, the whole loss. Yeah, I don't think Josh was that. I don't think Josh peaked either. I think he was holding her one layer of water himself. He could have been, if he was at his all time best, Josh could have been in the top six. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Just, uh, the one, the one odd thing about the two twelve was, you know, we had the same two and three as last year. We had Ahmad Ashkenani in second, and Jose Raymond in third. But this time, they never stood directly next to each other in the comparisons once. Did you, did you find that odd? Yeah, I thought it was bullshit. I thought it was complete bullshit. I think all the fans and all the professional bodybuilders and everybody else, all the gurus and you know, what have you, is everybody who did their post-show analysis, everyone said the same thing. That's bullshit. Yeah. You cannot have someone play second and not be compared to the third-place finisher. It just it just doesn't make any sense any which way you look at it. Right. And I feel horrible for Jose because he came back Saturday night, and he he was clearly better than Ashkenazi. Yeah. Clearly better. Yeah. That's just not my, eye, my eyes. That's right. a lot of people I've spoken to that were there watching – they have no um, particular allegiance to Jose Raymond or Ashkenani. Right. They were there as fans, and they said the same thing. They said Jose was better Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, uh, you probably saw Ahmad at either the Olympia last year or the Arnold this this earlier this season. I was more impressed with him at both of those shows for some reason than I was at this show. It just doesn't seem to have that pop, and his waist looked a little thicker. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Have you noticed all the guys from the Camel Crew in Kuwait have the same exact look? Similar look, yes. Absolutely. They all have that same exact look. Okay, now, is it good enough to get to the Olympia? Obviously. Is it pleasing to the eye? No, it's not. I had David Henry winning the Arnold Classic. Yeah, okay, absolutely. I thought David won it from conditioning, and, you know, if you break down shot for shot, David won that, the Arnold Classic. But, um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's poor Jose. What can I say? You know, he has every right in the world to be to be fucking pissed off right now. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of this new kid, the 24-year-old Derek Lunsford? I, I think he's a USA champion, right? Correct. Yeah, he's got a, he's got the very bright future ahead of him. Uh, he needs to go talk to whoever put his color on. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was up with that, you know? This is the Olympia, you know what I'm saying? And if you're backstage... Yeah, I kind of blame the people backstage, too. You know, the, I think ProTam was backstage working the, the, the athletes, correct? Yes. Somebody should have said something to him. Seriously, say something to him. This is not the USA's. This is not the, the little pro show that you qualified and you, you know, for the Olympia for, wherever it was. This is the fucking Mr. Olympia. You know, make sure everything is 100% on point. But physique-wise, he's got a very bright future. He needs to fill out. That's it. Just yeah. fill out. Because, I mean, structurally, I think he's... He's probably the best guy up there in terms of Yeah, it, he is. Um, but it, it, one of the things, I don't want to drift off the subject matter, but the, isn't it strange that you know, if you go back 10, 15 years, the national champion and the USA champion were superstars. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, they were on the magazine cover. 
Yeah, as the pros, when you yeah, it, those days are done. You know what I'm saying? I feel good that this guy came back with nice shape and symmetry, and it didn't go to some fucked up super heavyweight that doesn't deserve it. But but he still has a long ways to go to fill out his frame. Yeah, and I think you know, 24 years old, he's only been bodybuilding, he says, for four years. So I think two or three years we're gonna have. I believe he's gonna be the next 212 multiple champion after Flex Lewis. If he stays on the right track, yes. Yeah, the potential yeah. certainly there. Yeah, who knows? He might end up somewhere in the Middle East, <laughs> signing <laughs> some other you know team, uh, <laughs> what have you. Who knows? Well, let's just say he's. Let's hope that he stays on track. Camel Camel Crew could get this kid up to 250 by next year. Who knows? <laughs> you know? So before we talk about the actual the Mr. Olympia contest, uh, we had a huge shakeup go on over there. It's still going on, obviously. But right. The IFBB Pro League, Jim Mannion and the NPC breaking away from the IFBB amateur over in Spain, Rafael Santoja. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's been grumbling. You know, I think they've been butting heads for years over certain things. Was this really yeah, a I don't like each other. I was, very, I was shocked to see this whole thing happen. Were you shocked? No. No. No, because I had inside information. I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I still have friends in, in, in deep, dark places, my friend. <laughs> And, I, you know, and I get I get text messages from all sorts of people from all over the world. So I kind of had it. I kind of knew it was coming. To be honest with you, Ron, it, it really is not going to change much because there's one thing that everybody who's starting in the sport wants. They want to get to the Olympia stage. They yeah. want to get to the Arnold Classic Ohio. Right. That's where they want to be. How do you get there? You have to go through Jim Mannion. All right. There's no other way. So whatever is happening right now, as a matter of fact, listen, my concern was for the athletes because what about all those guys who are getting ready for the, the 2017 shows that are coming up in yeah. four weeks and five weeks and six weeks and all of 2017? That was my concern. I spoke to Jim Mannion yesterday, and he, re he assured me, and he said that he is putting the athletes first, and he will honor all winners in the 2017 shows, even with the Raphael shows, with pro cards with the IFBB, if they show wanted. Because you must be working with some guys who are doing these these IFBB amateur shows this season. I'm working with a lot of them, yeah. yeah. You know, and they're they're extremely concerned, extremely concerned. But you know what? I you know after talking to Jimmy and he said no, athletes come first, and as long as it's 2017, I will honor their victories. So. Yeah. Very good. So it's it looks like Santoja is going to start his own pro federation, correct? That it looks like it, yeah. So, like you said, all the athletes, everyone's dream is to go to the Arnold and to the Olympia, and Santoja is going to have his own shows. But you know, who's really going to want to be a pro in that organization when they don't lead to the big shows that we all care about? True, and I always go back to the same example, Ron, of Vince McMahon. He started the WBF with more money than the Weeders, with more publicity with the Weeders, with TV, with everything you could possibly want, and he failed. Yeah. Why? Because of the Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what people want. People want that title. You know, unless Santoa pulls some uh, ridiculous money out of God knows where, and has his pro shows have dis disgustingly high prize money or something. But I don't maybe. Know. You know, again, who knows what the money factor, but the you know the prestige factor will always go to the to the Olympia. That's what the kids want. Right. All right. So let's talk about the Olympia. Let, let's start at the top. Uh, Big Rami and Phil Heath were. The, it was a two man show, really. Those were the two battling it out. You know, you watched the stream and everything. How did you see it going down? What do you think was was happening as you were watching? Um. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to disagree with you just a little bit on that. I didn't think three it was man a two man show. show. I thought it was a three man show. Yeah. Let's As a matter of fact, after prejudging, I had Bonnet clearly in second place. Wow. You know, and that wasn't just me. I'm texting back and forth with uh, with Chad and whoever the hell was out there, and everyone had Bonnet second. Mm. You know. Um. Listen, the when I when Phil walked out there. I laughed, I smiled, and I said, there's number seven. I mean, wow. It's like, you, you, you want to think back and you want to say to yourself, okay, all, I'm sure we're going to talk about all the guys coming up in this episode, but where are all those guys? Where, what the fuck were they thinking? You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I, I know we're going to get to those names, but there were at least four guys who had the potential of getting next to Phil and handing him some thunder, you know? Yeah. And none of them came through. None of them. 
right? That's ridiculous, man. A lot, a lot of missed opportunities. A lot. A lot of missed opportunities. This was a big time opportunity for four or five guys, and and they fucked up. So getting back to Bonac, I mean Bonac was I I agree he was the best condition man on that stage. Right. Uh, you know, structurally he doesn't have that that pretty X frame like them because he doesn't have the long torso with the V. But you know Phil's Phil's structure isn't the greatest either. Structurally, Rami kills them all, but he right. didn't. He didn't. He's missing the, the muscle quality and the detail. So you know how would you justify? Do you think if Bonac had won, a lot of people would have been very upset about it because he doesn't have that doesn't have that classical structure that we're used to seeing with an Olympia champion? Mm, I don't know if people would have been upset, maybe shocked. Yeah. You know, um, if Rami would have won, I don't think anybody would have been upset because it would have been a shot of adrenaline to the sport. It would have spiced things up a little bit, maybe piss fell off and come back next year and it would be one of the best Mr. Olympias ever. It would have been like that. But, you know, you got to hand it to the judges. You know, I was a little bit worried that they were going to be some funny business going on with uh, Bader and, you know, the news was released and then Bader is supposedly going to be in charge of the whole Middle East, NPC, worldwide. I mean, who knows what's going on? You know, you know what I'm talking about, the politics yeah, and all that sure. shit. But you got to take your hats off to the judges. You know, if you look at the score sheets, 5-5-10. Five, five, Phil was clearly number one. Hmm. You know, it wasn't close. Yeah, that being said, he was good enough to beat Rami, but, you know, we we haven't seen the best Phil in a couple of years. It's been you know I, I still think 2011 his first win was by far the best. Hey, listen, ever. Ron, it's 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 the evolution of the look that is being presented to the world. Phil is going with what the the trend is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When Ronnie Coleman was winning, we had Sean Ray and Flex Wheeler and Kevin Levert. We had cartoon characters that said. Oh, the judges are rewarding massive, massive size, so let's just get as big as we possibly can. And who did it better than anybody else? Cutler. Cutler said, fuck it, I'm going to become a bohemoth, and that's the only thing that's going to be able to stand next to this guy. Yeah. The judges made that decision, and the athletes went that way. Believe me, if the judges went in a different direction, the athletes will go back into that direction too. Right now, the trend is big, nasty, freaky, giant monsters coming from Kuwait, well, we're going to do the same thing in the United States. Well, we're going to do the same thing in Russia. Everybody's trying to emulate that. So yeah. that's what you're going to get. Phil Phil is still Phil. Um, his stomach, everybody's talking about his stomach. Yes. Stomach issues, stomach this, stomach that. Okay. The, yes, his stomach was, uh, was sticking out in some shots and what have you. But that's the look that they are rewarding right now. Massive, massive size. It was the biggest Phil we've ever seen. Yeah. Was it the best Phil? No, I agree with you. A few years back, I think he was better. But, again, if I were these other guys, I would use my head instead of my fucking uh, muscles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is going to beat Phil? Cedric, Mc I've said it a thousand fucking times leading up to the show. Cedric, 4% sharper than he was at the Arnold Classic, with another maybe 3 or 4% fullness, would have given... Phil, a run, I mean, the worst time ever. Phil would have been freaking out. Yeah. Dexter Jackson, if he would have came back the way he did at the finals, at prejudging, he could have been problems for Phil. Um, the, the biggest, I think the biggest guy who made the biggest mistake is, um, Roden. what's his name? Uh, uh, Sean Roden. Yeah. What the fuck is Sean thinking? Mm. Seriously, what is he thinking? If he comes in with that beautiful shape, but bone dry fucking shredded, you're going to have the judges going, God damn, who do I fucking, you know, who am I going to go for? Right. Am I going to go for Phil, who's bigger but not as good, to, or to the all-time best Sean Roden? And then you will win the fans. You will win the people, become the people's champion. And when Roden gets second and the boos start screaming out, he's going to actually win the Olympia just from that. Hmm. But these guys don't think like that, man. They just want to come in. I mean, I don't know what Roden was thinking, to be honest with you. And then listening to Chris Aceto, Saying, you know, I saw him walk out, and you know, the night before I saw him, and I said he's fine. That's not how you coach. What the hell does that mean? You got to be every ten minutes. You got to be like, let me see, let me see what you got, let me see what you got, let me see what yeah. you got. So I put a little bit of blame on Chris too on that one. Yeah, well, a little bit. Of, yeah. That's his coach. I mean, if, who's responsible for his condition on stage? Your coach should be like Chad used to be in my room every two hours. Take off your clothes. Let me see what you got. Take off your clothes. As tired as you are, as as, as hungry as you just want to lay down, no, you got to get up. He and then the coach makes the adjustments all the way up to the show. 
Um, as far as the William Bonac thing, William Bonac is a shorter, more compact, better Kai Green. Mm. That's all I see him. Yeah. Very He's a little bit more complete than Kai Green. Shorter, more compact. William Bonac's problem is what can he what else can he do? Can he get bigger? No. Can he get more cut? No. What the fuck else can this guy do? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So all he can do is just keep coming back. Okay, keep coming back, and hopefully somebody will be off, and he can sneak in. He's in a really weird situation, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I mean, considering this was a two twelve guy not that long ago. Right. And, exactly. You know, they've they've been saying for years, uh, Flex Lewis would get killed at the Mr. Olympia because he's too short. He's this. He's that. But I mean, Bone. He's the same exact height as Bonac. Yeah, but he doesn't have that incredible muscularity. Flex Lewis has great. He's got, Flex Lewis is great for the 212. He should not move up into the into the open division. Is mm-hmm. that would be a mistake? Um, he and he also needs to understand that there's kinks in his armor right now. Flex needs to go back to the drawing board, come back better than he's ever had before. Because now these guys smell the blood in the water and they're coming after him. Hmm. Especially the, the the Kuwaiti guys. Getting back a second, you know, you said Phil. He's just doing what he's just presenting the look that's being rewarded today. This huge, monstrous, freaky look. I mean, if that's the look that the judges are going to reward, why didn't they pick Rami? Rami's way freakier and bigger than Phil. Because Phil was better. He's the better bodybuilder. Yeah. You know, you go shot for shot. Front double bicep, pretty even. Um, front lat spread, Rami 100%. Side chest, Phil. Side tri- Even though a lot of people liked Rami's side chest, I would still say Phil. Side tricep, Phil. Back double bicep, Phil. Back lat spread, which you would think would be Rami all the way, somehow Phil still pulls it out because of his 3D look. Yeah. Ab shot, horrible. Uh, my uncle could beat Phil Heath in the <laughs> ab and thigh shot. But oh, um, what should we call it? Uh, most muscular, Phil. So when you break it down like that, it's still Phil. Yeah. You got to, you gotta. I mean, it's like God, you have to, It's what do they say in boxing? You got to knock out the, champ, the, yeah. the champion because you know, they're not going to give you the decision. Right. Same concept here, man. Same concept here. You know, people are they're always up in arms if the Olympia champion lately obviously it's been Phil for seven years now, but if the Olympia champion comes in a little bit off and still wins, people get upset. But any real historian of the sport has seen many examples of this, all the way going back to Arnold one uh, Franco, uh, you know, Ronnie won a couple where he wasn't at his best. Dorian won with a one bicep. Uh, Lee Haney was watery a couple times, eighty nine and ninety. So, you know, why do you think people still get upset? Do they, do they not know their history? Do they not know how this works? No, people, it's, that's just people, man. People, misery loves company. And people want to sit there and come up with an excuse to, to yell at somebody. Listen, he, Phil Heath is the best in the world. Nobody could outdo him this year. That's it. That's the bottom line. Live with it, love it, learn it, hate it, whatever it is. If, look, check, let me give you a scenario. The scenario is this. Rami with... Five percent more separation. Okay. Yeah. William Bonac, a little bit taller. <laughs> right? yeah. We could make that happen. Sure. Dexter Jackson, Dexter Jackson, about maybe three percent fuller than he was at the finals with that type of conditioning. Yeah. Um Sean Roden absolutely fucking shredded and Cedric McMillan at his best. That would have been a fucking Olympia, man. Yeah. Absolutely. That would have been a hell of a fucking Olympia. Then it would have been fucking crazy and call outs and, and switch this person, that person. And I said it um, on the last interview that I did with another, you know, show. Yeah. I said that that um, Phil has a couple of weaknesses. One of his weaknesses is he does not like to be moved around. And did you notice that this time? How angry and upset <laughs> he gets when, he, when, when Weinberger moves him around. Yeah. And says, go over here. He laughed like it was funny, but it was bothering him. He, you could tell it bothered him. And when he came back to the night show, mm-hmm. it was bothering him even more when they did yeah. it. So, it. So in other words, Phil has that vulnerability. You just got to be able to take advantage of it by being at your absolute best. 1999 British Grand Prix. Everybody in that show peaked. Yeah. Why can't we ever see that again? Insulin. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not really kidding. But, uh, you know, it, Phil... I think Phil, uh, the second night when they were doing the rejudging, or the, I'm sorry, the confirmation round, when they put uh, Rami in the middle, he actually he put his head down and laughed like it was. I got the impression that to him it was ridiculous that they would even consider Rami for the win. Like he was so much better than anybody, 
even Rami, that it was beneath him to stand to the side with Rami in the middle. Right. You know, I mean, Phil, and then I don't know, have you seen these couple of videos he put out on his social media the past couple of days, Phil? Yeah. Uh, there's one where he talks about his bank account and this and that, and it's like a gangster, real brash, arrogant type of thing. You know, I, I find him to be the least popular Mr. Olympia of my lifetime. Uh, yeah, he is. He is. He is very unpopular. So is Floyd Mayweather, but they're both laughing all the way to the fucking bank. True. True. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, listen. Uh, Phil has gotten to a point where he believes in his. I mean, it, it, it's that same thing that goes again with self belief. He believes that nothing and no one can even come close to him. Yeah. If he's if he does what he needs to do, you can hear it from the press conference. You can hear it from his YouTube videos and all that stuff. You know what? Put somebody next to him in shape and then let them fight for it. Because Phil, so far, nobody's been able to get up there and really challenge him, except for Dexter a couple years ago, who I thought should have won. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Again, you know, you can't you can't hate the hater. You you can't you know hate the player, man. You gotta hate the game because he's Phil's the best. Yeah, There's no you know what are you gonna do? He's unpopular. He might be an asshole and all that stuff, but you know, it is what it is. Now, in another thing about Phil is, you know, he's got he's got to thicken up his skin when it comes to some of these internet trolls. You know what I'm saying? So if people start getting on his case. Just just take it easy, man. You're the best bodybuilder in the world. What are you doing responding to fucking morons? That's another thing. You Mama, know Luke. Mama Luke says you and Bob used to say. Yeah, exactly, Mama Luke. <laughs> Some people were, were saying that they thought Roden last year would have beat Phil this year. Do you agree with that? No, no. Roden does. Ro, Sean Roden needs a back. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. He needs a back. He, you know, you win the Mr. Libya from the back. I said it before and I said it again. If Phil Heath wins the back double bicep and the back lat spread, he's Mr. Olympia. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's what it comes down to. Everybody gets upset. Sean Roden at the press conference was like, that's just one or two poses. This is, there's, there's six other, seven other poses. No, man. It's the back that wins Olympias. That's what it comes down to. You turn around and you beat Phil Heath in a back shot, it's over with. It's lights out. You will take his soul from him. He will not be able to recover. <laughs> uh, I, I thought Roly Winkler should have been a little higher. Do you, do you think Roly I agree. Got, yeah? yeah, I totally agree. I think he was, he was uh, justified of being upset because he was upset when he got what he placed. Right. Um, yeah, I had him a couple spaces higher. Yeah. Yeah. He was better than Nathan. And uh, and I believe he was better than Sean Roden. Because here's the thing: is you know, Sean was not very good Friday night at the judging. I had him somewhere around seventh or eighth, to be honest. Right. Maybe he, even maybe even a case you could have made a case for even lower. Uh, but then he came back. He was he was much stomach was a lot flatter Saturday. But it seems like when guys don't look as good one day as another, they can run it both ways. Like ah, uh, it's too late. We, you know, you lost, you lost too many points Friday. But then if, if it's someone like Phil that looks way better the other on the second day, they say, well, he looked a lot better and he made up some points. It, it just seems this whole rejudging thing seems so. Yeah, it's so a little bit biased. It's a little weird. I, t I give you that. It's a little bit weird. But still, it comes down to, um, you know, when it's when when it, when all the dust settles and all that stuff, it all comes down to. Who's going to knock out the champ? Nobody knocked out the champ. Right. Not even close. Um, Cedric, like you said, I mean, 4% better than the Arnold, but he looked like, to me, about 10% worse than the Arnold. He's, I, I have no idea what the hell he's thinking. I, I, I said it leading up to the show. I said, I hope he's not goofing around. I hope he's, you know, hired a team. You know, he's got money now. I, yeah. heard, I hope he's hired a team or, um, what's his, who's his sponsor? Uh, Cytec. Cytec. Tech, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, I hope the guys at SciTech, you know, put some money into him, uh, hired a bunch of people to w carry his gym bag and drive his car, you know, everything that they do for these guys in Kuwait, everything that Cutler used to do. Jay used to have an entourage, follow him around, just like you know, you know, pay people and open the door for him and all that stuff. Yeah, you know what? That all that shit. It might sound like you know, conceited, stupid shit, but it helps. Yeah. I remember the last two weeks before my shows, I used to have my training partner speak for me. I couldn't even fucking talk, you know. So I'm like, uh, just touch, just answer my questions for me, and just drive me here, do this and that. And he used to do that just to, you know, to help me out to get me make things a little bit easier. Yeah. Cedric, to me, seems like he's in he's in cruise control mode. Hmm. I'm Cedric McMillan. I'll do what I want to do. You know, I, I'll train the way I want to train, and I'll listen to fifty percent of what my coach says. You can't do that, not at the <laughs> Olympia level. 
Wow. Uh, so did you watch the classic at all? I did. Okay. So I, you know, do you, I, I find it almost as entertaining. I think it's going to be popularity wise right up there with yeah. the open pretty soon. I love the classic. I think these guys are, uh, they were all conditioned and they were fighting it out. I love this new division. So we had some favorites didn't do as well. I mean, Sadiq was looked at all year long as someone who could have potentially won the title. All right. Uh, Time out, time out right there, time out. Okay. Sadiq was looked at by who uh, as potentially winning this thing? Who? The magazines? Flex, the mag I Flex Magazine, yes. Okay, and, uh, come on. No, no. Yeah, no, exactly. no, no. no. Now, Sadiq is a nice guy. I mean, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's a nice guy and all that stuff. But he doesn't have the genetics to stand next to some of those other guys. He doesn't. Yeah. You know? He gave his absolute best, and it just was, what, seventh place? Is that what he got? Yeah, I believe it was seven. Six or seven plays. Okay, well, that's it. I mean, that's that's what he is. I had a few people. Now, if we're going to break down the classic, I'll tell you who got royally screwed and fucked in the ass and should be upset. Danny Hester. Terrence Ruffing, kid. What oh. the hell was that? Yeah. I mean, you talk about the rebirth of Serge Nubre, man. Yeah. Just the, the, the look, the way, the flow, the density, the classic look. Uh, he, I had him much higher, man. Well, I where, think Terrence. What did he end up like, eighth or ninth? Terrence got sixth. Oh, sixth. Okay, so yeah, he good. got sixth place. Uh, so fifth place was the champ, the reigning champ, Danny Hester. Good place for him. You're right. I mean, I thought he looked as good, if not better, than last yeah, year. Yeah, he was. I think he was a little bit better, but uh, you know, the same thing that I was. I told uh, a lot of people, especially Arash. Arash is a good friend of mine. Yeah. I actually introduced him to Weinberger many years ago and said, "This kid's going to be pretty good. Keep an eye on him and what have you." And I, talk, I was talking to Arash at the Atlantic States four, year, uh, four months ago, and um, he had just started his prep. And I told him, I said, Arash, a couple of things. Number one, uh, you got to watch out for this kid in Canada. And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, you got to watch out for this kid, Bumstead. I'm telling you, he's dangerous. Watch him. Ah, oh, no, 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 I'm okay. He's, he's still young, blah, blah. I said, okay. Number two, the level of competition from first year introduced to the Olympia to second year is going to be leaps and bounds more. Be careful. These guys are coming after it. They're going to want you. It's not going to be as easy as it was last year. No, no, no. I got this. I got this. I got this. What happened? It dropped down. The, it, the competition was fucking fierce, man. Yeah, it was. The competition was fierce. And Bumstead, I had him winning it, man. Hmm. Well, let's, let's I had see. him winning it. Let's go down the line. Just uh, one more. The George Peterson from New York. George yep. Peterson, third place. George, um, great, nice guy. No, George. Actually, my training partner went against him in the Atlantic States a few years ago and lost to him by one point. They brought him back out for the, you know, after prejudging, just the two of them. It was very, very close. George, great physique. He looks more like a 212 guy to me. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't have that. You know, I like him and I like Justin Miller. You know, I get along great with him and I. I call it like I see it, whether these guys are nice or they're assholes. I don't, I'm talking about right. physiques. Right. And I don't know how he got past Arash and Danny where they have much more classic look in my mind. Uh, that's a good question. Again, uh, you're going to have to uh, interview some of the judges for that one. But uh, I, Arash, he has that classic look. Um, obviously, Dimatize thought that he was going to win it, and they pushed him and pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. A lot of people had him as the number one guy going in even though Danny was the champion. And when Arash posted his side chest shot hours before prejudging, mm -hmm. I knew it. I said, fuck, he's flat. Mm -hmm. Whatever he's doing, he better start filling out now. And I don't know what Chris Aceto does. I don't know what his, um, you know, his program is a few hours before. But personally, if I was his coach and I would have saw that he was flat, I would have started pounding the sodium as much as I can. Whatever I can get his hands on, hamburgers, ketchup, french fries, whatever to fill him back out. So when he walked out there, he would be full and nice and popping. But um, that's what he, that was his downfall. Rash had everything, yeah. everything going for him. He was flat. So I mean, with with obviously the open guys don't really seem to be too concerned about being so full that their stomachs are a little bloated. But right. I I have to wonder. I haven't talked to Rash. I don't know if you have, but I wonder if that was the his fear was that if he tried to fill out too much, he'd lose that that small waist and be able to pull a vacuum and all that stuff. Yeah, um, again, I don't know. I don't know what his uh, what his protocol is. I don't know what Aceto has his athletes do. But, again, going from me, what I do with my athletes is I, if I find out that they're a little bit flat at 5 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I have them eat hamburgers, um, lots of sodium, and lots of calories just to get it going. 
And then, then once that meal is in there, we go into every hour on the hour, we do the simple, uh, excuse me, with the complex cars, but dry. Everything has to be dry. Dry, 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 dry with no water, just maybe a sip. That stuff stays in your system until you start pumping up. You pump up with chocolate, calories, and sodium once again, gulp of water, everything gets sucked in and goes. I have yet to miss when it comes to fullness and sharpness, but that's the old school method, man. That's the way it used to be done. Now it's, I don't know, I saw a rash the first day when he got to Vegas. He put one of those trash suits on and went out running outside in Vegas and he was wringing his socks on YouTube showing how much he sweat. I don't get that. I mean, maybe that's his protocol and that's what works for him, but I don't understand that. That's that's the exact opposite of what I would do. I would have him sleeping and elevating his feet in his room and pissing every fucking 45 minutes. That's what I would do. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, he's, I don't, he actually, when I interviewed him a couple weeks ago, he said he gave you credit as the first guy who ever brought him into uh, Bev and Steve's gym. And said you walked right up to Weinberger with him and said, this kid's going to be awesome and this and that. So, Yeah, has- Rash has, um, I mean, I knew he had the potential and he had the heart. And I know Persian bodybuilders. Yeah. I know their physiques. Uh, I know what, what it, it, Persian bodybuilders are made for classic bodybuilding. Hmm. Okay, because they don't have that super tapered bo- uh, waist, but they have that classical look. Muhammad Makawe, Nasser El Sambad. I mean, they just have that look that would be great for classic physique. Um, Arash still has his whole life ahead of him in this sport. He's a bright future. He can go. And the only thing that I would suggest to him is he, if the level of competition last year was, let's say, four, and this year it was six, next year it's going to be eight. Yeah. So you, can't, you got, you, you know, going back to the drawing board is excellent, but just remember, so is everybody else, and they're gunning for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, second place, Bumstead, what would you think? 22 years old, uh, yeah, this kid, I, I say when this kid gets a back, when his back gets thicker and his arms are a little bigger, I, don't, I think he's going to be the Flex Lewis, you know, he's going to run Classic Physique Olympia for years. I yeah. see him winning four or five, six times in a row. Yeah, well, here's, I, I'm sure he watches this and I'm sure he's going to be listening to this and people are going to say, so here's my advice to Mr. Chris Bumstead. Okay. Chris, st- I've seen some of his YouTube videos, stop. He's, a, he's super strong. He's an ex-football player, I believe, right? Yeah. Okay, stop with the fucking 700-pound deadlifts <laughs> and all that. That's weightlifting. Mm-hmm. That's not bodybuilding. Become a bodybuilder, okay? You don't have to. Go learn. Go watch some Flex Lewis videos. Flex became a bodybuilder. He knows how to train and do specific types of things. Oh, Phil Heath. Go yeah. Look at Phil Heath and how he came and had no back. To one of the best backs and to the best back, and right? And didn't do one deadlift. Yeah, well, because that, that doesn't do anything. I have clients right now. I got a kid right now, Matt, uh, 100% natural athlete, deadlifts 600 pounds. Eat, just, I mean, it's like nothing. He picks it off the floor and drops it. But he's weak. His point is his back. There so every day, every time I see him, I say, Matt, stop fucking weightlifting, and start bodybuilding. It's different. The difference is bodybuilding has all to do with one word: the pump. If you're not getting pumped up, you're not bodybuilding. Stop just trying to be Superman in the gym. Believe me, if I go in the gym right now, I can put seven plates on and squat it and up and down. All I'm going to do is end up like Ronnie in five years on it with crutches. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. You drop back the weight and you train for the pump. You pour blood into the legs and the arms and the whatever it is. Bumpstead works on his back and trains correctly and gets those arms a little bigger. Untouchable. Yeah. Untouchable. So we did have Bree on the kid from LA I shouldn't call him a kid I think he's turning 38 soon but uh <laughs> yeah I mean that kid that guy is just put together like a like a Greek statue to- Breon was the total package and Breon won it from the back that's yeah. it it was close you know and Breon was a popular guy and you know I actually I was going back and, back and forth with Cormier and he's like my boy's gonna take it I'm like man I don't know man <laughs> Bumstead's tough man anyway but um yeah Breon won it from the back simple and plain he's there's um not that many weaknesses, and he improved, and he had all the momentum going. He was the New York Pro Champ, you know. Yeah. I, I think this sets up everything for um, a 2018, and it's going to be fantastic. I mean, I don't know if Bumstead's going to do the Arnold Classic, but I would definitely suggest that he does. Well, I mean, would you suggest that he does or take it off and get that back? No, 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 no. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Yeah. He's young. He can recover. Yeah. He can 20, recover. 22 years old. I think we both have. He can do a show, rest. 
you know, go drink some beer and hot dogs with his friends for about <laughs> five weeks. Let the, you know, let, let everything come back down to normal and then go back and start the prep again. He can do it. Yeah. He needs cool. that momentum. Yeah, I mean, I think we both have uh, Air Jordans older than that kid. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Arnold Europe is coming up. I mean, no Phil Heath. Do you see that as a fairly fairly easy win for Rami if he just holds his condition? Um, if – is Dexter doing it? Nope. Okay. Uh, Bonac doing it? Yes. Yes, that will be the only problem that he has. Yeah. 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 You know, it, if you look at the history and all that shit, and especially being over in Europe, I would think that Rami would win and clean house and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Um, with all the screwy things that are happening right now, you know, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going on? Um, if I were Bonac, I would come in and absolutely bone butt fucking dry shredded and give him a run for his money. Cool. Right on. All right. Well, I thank you for your expert opinions. Yeah. Uh, let, let's drop your social media and stuff uh, where, so people can find you again. Insta you uh, King Kamali, Instagram. You can, uh, I mean, I, I put pictures of all my clients up on a daily basis, the transformations. I give tips all the time. Um, my YouTube channel, King Kamali, again. King Kamali, you, which I, I did, just did my Olympia post for you. Uh, I cursed a little bit more on that one. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, all these little things are happening, and um, there's a lot more things. I also got. Um, you know, I will definitely 100% be at the Arnold Classic in 2018 and the Olympia with my company, ABN, and we're going to have a big-ass booth and, and lots and lots and lots of exciting things happening right now. So it's working. I'm working my ass off. Man. Yeah, I know you are. I know you are. So I appreciate you taking the time, King. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, always, always love to hear your insights, your opinions, because I know you're not afraid. You don't hold back. And that's what people yeah, there's, well, there's nothing to be afraid of, to be honest with you, because <laughs> once you tell the truth, there's, you know, you, you, it is what it is. I'm I'm retired. I don't need to step back on that stage. I'm still very friendly and talk to Steve and Jim and all the top, you know, head guys at the NPC and the IFBB and all that stuff. But if there's something wrong, I'll tell them. Like I called Jimmy. I said, hey, Jimmy, what the fuck are my athletes supposed to do now? <laughs> you know, you know, what are they supposed to do? They're freaking out. And he was very, you know. He said, King, I love you, man. He said, tell him everything is okay. We're good to go. I'll honor everything in 2017. Awesome. So, you know, a lot of people are afraid of, uh, you know, Steve and, and, and the top brass. Of the, just talk to them. Mm. You know, they're human beings. <laughs> just go talk to them. If you have a problem, call them. I've, you know, there's been this, a couple of times this year where I've, you know, questioned Steve. You know, as a matter of fact, there was one show where I was sitting next to him at the judging table, and I was completely disagreeing with what he was doing. I'm like, Steve, how the hell could you call that girl out? She's got a line on her body. King, yeah. calm down, calm down. For this show, that's the line. So I got to, you know, you can go back and forth. They're not these grumpy old men who will ruin your career and all that stuff. Just go talk to them, and then uh, and they'll set you straight. I don't know what's going on with this whole shit now. There's going to be World War Three between Raphael and Jimmy, but we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be a team of lawyers like we've never seen before. <laughs> we, we shall see. See, it's going to be like the League of Nations going back, exactly. back and forth exactly. to each other. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, uh, appreciate it as always, King. Can I say one last thing, my friend? Of course, of course. Okay, one last thing. I'll tell you who stole the show. Figure. Those three girls, mm. Latoika, La Candice, and Cindy. My... Stop. God, man. Like, where are they made? I mean, what, what I mean you're talking about three flex wheelers yeah. at at their prime, and either way, it was the first time where any either one of the three could have won, and nobody would have been upset. Right. They would have been like, yep, yeah, okay, you, she deserves it. No, the other one, yep, yeah, she deserves it. Just the level of conditioning, the the level of presentation, the symmetry, the muscularity, and all three of them look like girls, uh, not troll mutants. Um, it just, it, it was perfect. I mean, I, I think the figure stole the show. Those three girls were yeah. absolutely astonishing. Yeah. Gave hats off, man. Wow. I, I had never actually seen, uh, you know, I didn't pay attention last year. It's Cindy, but what, cause Giles, the guy who was covering with me from the UK said, you gotta, you gotta watch out for the Cindy girl. And she came on stage like, holy crap. I can't right. believe it. I can't believe I never heard of her. And yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. 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 Yeah, just, yeah, 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 genetically, just almost perfect. The shoulders, yeah, the little it. waist, it's everything was just yeah. Like, which wow. makes you, which makes you look at girls like um the blonde um what was her name the ex champion Nicole Wilkins and hey, Nicole and you got to feel bad for her because she did everything right. Yeah. But how the fuck are you gonna stand next to perfection? It's just 
it, 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 it is what it is. Sometimes, you know, genetic mutants come along, and, you know, when Latoika won it, everyone said, oh, she'll win it for 10 years. Right. Then Candace comes along, and they're like, oh, wait a second. And then, then Cindy comes like, like, holy shit. Yeah. And then there's another one somewhere out there. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's another one somewhere out there that's that's coming up. So that's what makes it fun, man. That yeah. was, that's what really makes it fun. I'm glad you brought that up because that was probably the, the toughest top three out of any division. Most closely Hands, fought. Man. And any, any, one, any one of those three would have been amazing winners. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, figures, figures stole the show. So for those who think judging is easy, uh, not really. Not really. No, it's not. <laughs> cool, man. All right, King, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully talk to you again sometime soon again. Yeah, Always man. Tell Steve I said hello and peace and God bless, man. All right, for the Ron Line Report, it's been Ron with the King, King Kamali.